Hey, it's the Profit Answer Man, Rocky Lalvani. If you're new to the podcast, check out my interview with Mike Michalowicz. It's episode number two. If you want to hear about each chapter in the Profit First book, go back and listen to episodes three through 13. Episode one is the why and how. On the Profit Answer Man, we learn money mastery without all the complicated accounting mumbo jumbo using a simple system. Your accountant is busy documenting your transactions and creating a rear view mirror of what happened. My guess is you don't even look at the reports they sent you. If you're like most business owners, you struggle with this, and it's not your fault. We aren't taught money in school, and accountants aren't taught how to be profitable. The Profit First system created by Mike Michalowicz works, and he certified me to help you implement the system in your business. Remember, the new equation is sales minus profit equals expenses. Let's face it, without cash flow, you can't pay your employees, buy needed materials, or pay your mortgage and support your family. I help you to do that and more so you can focus on the parts of the business you love and receive the rewards for your labor and investment into your business. The stronger you are as a business owner, the more jobs you create, the better we are as a country. Small business owners are the backbone of America, and for that, you deserve to be well rewarded. Just remember, more revenue does not equal more profit. That's why we focus on the bottom line. This episode of the Profit Answer Man podcast is brought to you by smbpodcastnetwork.com. The network is a collection of podcasts and shows from around the internet, which focus on bringing you interviews with amazing guests who share actionable advice, ideas, and information for small and medium-sized business owners and entrepreneurs. Visit www.smbpodcastnetwork.com to find more great shows and easily subscribe to be notified of new episodes. It's a great way to discover quality content. If you've discovered us via the network, then I hope you enjoy today's show and will consider subscribing directly so you never miss our episodes. For me, getting started is the hardest part. That first step of trying something new. But once I get going, it becomes easier and easier. Today, we have on Lindsay, who's going to talk about her journey of getting started with Profit First. And she's also going to share her wisdom on how we can prevent you from getting burned out. Lindsay Brownson is out to debunk the myth that stress, hustle, and busyness are the way to succeed in small business. She coaches overwhelmed creative entrepreneurs to help them reclaim time, streamline their business, rewire their habits to support their wealth and well-being. Her motto, love your business, own your life, is centered on the belief that success is a lifestyle and we can enjoy it at every level of our business. You know what? I agree with her. Let's meet her and find out how. Welcome to the Profit Answer Man, Lindsay Brownson. It's great to have you join us today. Thank you so much for having me, Rocky. I can't wait. So can you share a little bit about yourself and your business? Absolutely. So um, my name is Lindsay. I am a, I consider myself a creative entrepreneur, which means that I make a living from my ideas and the more ideas I have, the better I implement them, the more opportunity and money I make in the world. (laughs) So um, I do I do kind of two things. My primary business is I'm a life and business coach and I work with creative other creative entrepreneurs. I help ambitious, highly motivated, high achieving people in creative fields who have achieved some really great things in their business and in their career and in their life. And in many ways, they can kind of look at the life that they have and say, okay, that looks pretty good on paper, but they're kind of struggling because how they feel on the inside doesn't match what they see or what other people see on the outside. So a lot of times they have this kind of persistent feeling that anything that they do is just not quite enough. So as a result, they're constantly pushing harder, adding more to their plate, 
overworking, overextending themselves, biting off more than they can chew. I think we, we're all pretty familiar with, with what that feels like. And so they keep finding that they end up in the same place over and over, feeling exhausted, burnt out, and maybe having some really great results to show for their efforts. But they start to recognize at a certain point in life that the cost of their time, energy, their happiness is really just not worth all of the effort that they're putting in. So they need to do things in a different way. And that is where I come in to help them kind of recalibrate and get things back on track so they can keep being ambitious, keep doing more that they love, but actually feeling like their life is as amazing as it looks on paper. So that's my primary business. That's something that I've been doing um, full-time for about five years. I also have another business that I own with my husband where it's his his primary business. I'm the CFO in the company and I have kind of recently, I'm part owner in the company, but I've kind of recently jumped in to become the CEO role because his business took off so quickly. And we kind of discovered that there were a lot of messes happening due to, you'll love this, a lack of systems, a lack of planning, all kinds of things that I do with my clients, you know, were the things that his business really needed. So that's an area that I'm spending some time in these days as well. Does he listen to you? (laughs) You know what he says pretty regularly? I should really listen to you. (laughs) I should probably listen to your podcast. I'm like, of course you should. (laughs) You know, it's funny. A lot of times when I I coach uh, business owners and their wives are involved in the business. I'm like, your problem is you won't shut up and listen to your wife. (laughs) Which just do what she says, or you can pay me to tell you the same thing. That's okay, too. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly right. And I'm a big believer. I mean, part of what makes coaching itself so valuable is because you do need that kind of third party perspective. Your spouse is totally biased and in some ways that works great for you, but in other ways, you know, you're never fully going to trust that information from your spouse that you would hearing the same thing from someone else. And that is very, very true. So how did you learn about Profit First? So I am trying to think when I first, I'm sure it was from a podcast, to be honest. Um, I've read the book several times And it at least would have been like four or five years ago, Um, probably early days of kind of struggling in making my coaching business profitable. And I think that one of the the key things that really struck me um, when I first heard about the concept and then dove into it with the book was this idea of separating out kind of like the envelope system, separating out your finances to really understand what is going where and give you a new sense of control. And for me, that was a really big aha moment. And I find, and you can tell me how it is in your husband's business, but everyone's busy doing what they love in the business and money's flowing in. And so they're like, money's flowing in, we can spend. And they don't realize that just because it's flowing in, it can't flow out at the same rate. It's got to flow out at a much smaller rate, especially when you have to cover overhead employees and and all the work that it goes into building the business. And if you're not paying attention, it is not hard to have a whole bunch of leaks in your business and you wake up one day stressed going, how come I'm making all this money and I have none? Yeah. And that is literally what happened with my husband to kind of bring, get to this point where we were saying, okay, someone needs to be working on this. And I I volunteered. I'm a little more um, naturally inclined toward building systems and, you know, thinking strategically about the business, but it was this kind of nagging um, question that he kept having, which was where is all the money going? Where is it? Like we should have so much more money in the bank than we actually do. And I would tell him this over and over. I'm like, well, obviously you're spending it, right? The money isn't just drying up. It's going somewhere. But it wasn't really until um, we got to this place with his business where he was saying, okay, now we're hitting a certain threshold consistently for our income and we still don't have any money because he kept thinking that the income was just going to be the the thing that would make the difference, which was amazing. And I totally encourage that as a salesperson <laughs> to, to like have that fuel you to go out and make more sales. But there's no question that that's not 
if you bring more money in to a, a leaking boat, the boat is still going to sink. So we have a saying, profit is a habit, not an event. And for many business owners, it's always like, well, I'll be profitable when, mm-hmm. and it's I hit a certain dollar volume, right? I'll be profitable when we have a half million in sales and a half million sales comes and goes and they're still not profitable because they haven't built the systems processes and they haven't stopped the leaks within the business. So how's it going? (laughs) So it's definitely uh, a process, I would say, to get things up and running. Um, I think, you know, considering I'm kind of looking at this process wise in hindsight now too, because I can't help it. This is just where my brain goes. I'm like, how did we get here? Um, it's going well, but I actually would say that it's moving more slowly than I would expect to just because the, the outline, the framework is so simple that it seems like we should be able to just jump on and make this work. Um, that hasn't been our experience (laughs) with it. The first hurdle being us both agreeing and being on the same page about what we were doing. And then the second hurdle is just that we're still in a place where he's um, actively spending a lot of money and we've gotten clearer on where that money goes and what it's supposed to be doing, how we're making those dollars work. But we're still not um, like tied up to the point where it feels that every dollar really does have a purpose and that we can account for that purpose ahead of time, which is, I think, what our goal ultimately is. And the process is very simple. People make a few mistakes. One of the biggest is they don't open up the bank accounts. Hopefully you've got the bank accounts. We do. We do. That's the biggest hurdle. The second is they try and start where Mike shows the targets in the book. Mm. And they think that's where I'm supposed to be. And it's not. You start with where you are today. And for many businesses, Mike says it's it's 10 quarters to get from where you are today to where you want to be. And I've worked with some business owners who who've done it very quickly. I've worked with some business owners that struggle for years to get there. And a big part is what parts of your business are very hard to move. So if you went out and bought a truck and you've got a five-year lease, it's going to be very difficult to move that that number. If you're stuck in a particular building or there's something going on, that's a number that takes time to move. Mm-hmm. The first thing we do is we look for leaks. Like what are the obvious leaks in the business? And in most businesses, if you take the time to dig through a lot of them can probably find a 10% cut to the bottom line within a short period of time. It's stuff that when you sit down and you think about it, you're like, we're still paying for that. I didn't know we had that. Why are we doing that? And and that's kind of the first round. But after the first round, it's baby steps. We move people at 1% to 2% per quarter per category. So... It just takes time. You you cannot try and throw the the business into this this massive change overnight because everything will implode on you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's that's a really helpful reminder too, Rocky, because what you're saying in terms of this being a habit and sort of a lifestyle is it's so true in my anecdotal experience of this. I can definitely see where we've been essentially building the habit of money doesn't go out the door without it being run by me. Now, sometimes the money gets run by me after the fact, so the money's already out the door. Um, And other times it's literally, I need to write this check to so-and-so. Our biggest by, by far is our payroll. So we are in the construction business, we depend on labor, And the labor is really expensive right now, especially. Um, So labor materials are a huge cost. They are not fixed costs. They're extremely variable. And and because this is a people-driven business, we're spending a lot of money on paying, like he likes to pay people very quickly. So all I'm saying is that with that, kind of developing some of these habits has really been more about opening that line of communication so that we can at least like connect the dots 
to where that payment has gone, where it's supposed to be, what categories it comes out of. And in that process, we're getting more and more clarity. I would say day by day, really, on how we want this to look in the direction that we're trending. But we're still in a space, you know, a few months into like really um, intentionally implementing this where there's money going out before we've got a real clear picture of what it's supposed to be looking like in our system. So one of the things that that brings up is, and especially in the construction business and especially during COVID, are you appropriately pricing? Because a lot of times I will see people go, yeah, I've got the numbers in my head. And I'm like, that's wonderful. And while you know what you're going to charge for X, did you happen to notice that the cost of a two by four went up four times? And did you adjust that number in your head? And the same goes for labor and everything else. It's making sure that you have the appropriate markups and that you're staying real time because these things are changing so fast today that if you don't have an appropriate bid on that project, because that's when you make your money. You make your money when you you hand them the the proposal and say, this is what it's going to cost. For someone in your business, we've almost gone to asterisk. Hey, this is what's going to cost. However, you know, if the price of lumber or this changes dramatically, you're going to get an upcharge because that's just the world we live in. And clients are accepting that these days. And yes. you have to have the courage to do that. I I can't tell you, I hear stories of people in the construction business, you know, especially in like whole house construction, and the builder is going to closing with a check, meaning he's got to pay money to sell this house because they mispriced it so badly. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so it's, you know, profit first is kind of what we, what I call level one. It, it's, it's giving you the early warning signs that you're spending too much. Mm -hmm. Level two, and it goes into it in one of the chapters is literally going line by line through your business and making sure that you're appropriately priced and appropriately spending. Yeah. I like what you say about it being a very real time process and using that. I mean, again, I'm coming from a world that is all about habits and daily or regular practices, the things that we do in our businesses every single day. And, and it's a, it's not a one and done kind of thing. And a lot of business owners I find really do think that there's a lot of these parts of their business that should just be, oh, as soon as I master that, then we're done and I never have to think about it again. And I would say very few parts of your business are going to be like that. It's going, it's this living, breathing thing that you need to constantly be looking at, reviewing, working on, modifying, questioning, you know, and, and coming back to the drawing board on things because it's ever evolving. The world is changing fast. Technology is dramatically affecting business. If you're not updating your processes and systems and constantly asking yourself, how can we improve? How can we do this better? Someone is going to come in and upset your industry like Uber did to the taxi and Airbnb did to the hotel business, and you're going to get blindsided. And and that even comes down to simple things like, how are you, you doing your bidding? What types of software are you using? Are they dynamic? Are they keeping up? with current pricing and what's happening in the marketplace? Is there a new technology that makes the way we do and deliver our products easier, faster? Is somebody new in the marketplace that's changed the way we do things? It could even be something as simple as advertising. You know, these days, it's funny, we're going back to uh, to postcards because they're cheap compared to, you know, these other services are so expensive. This is cheap. I can target a neighborhood. And for very little money, you know, if people see my my card, there's a good chance a certain percentage of them are going to pick up the phone and call me. And you've got a constant. And even within that, are we A-B testing our advertising? Try these words. Try this picture and and do all of those things. Love to get your inputs on what you do as you help these stressed out business owners. Yeah. 
as you're talking too, I, I wrote this down because that was really meaningful, but I, one hurdle that I find with a lot of the entrepreneurs, and again, I work mostly with creative people. So they are, they think a little bit differently than, than analytical, um, entrepreneurial people. Typically I'm going to air quotes that like big, big time <laughs> air quotes, but these are some of the patterns that I see sometimes nothing has gone wrong when you are redoing, revising, um, reinventing or realigning anything in your business or within your processes. And so many times I see the resistance with entrepreneurs, again, because, because we're busy, because we have a lot going on, because we don't have time to just throw away, people really don't want to redo something that they think is already done. That's where the resistance comes in to all the things you just said. You've got to revisit it, check on the, like, check your industry, check your competitors, see what's going on in the world. And a lot of times it's not laziness. I would say it's busyness, but it's this resistance to really coming back to the drawing board and being willing to reinvent it as many times as it takes for it to work for you now today. And that probably leans very well into what your actual question was, Rocky, (laughs) which is kind of my my take on, and how I help people in that realm. And I think that's kind of the bottom line, which is you need your business to work for you today. You don't need the version of your business that worked for you a year ago, unless it's still working for you today. And chances are, it's not going to still work for you today, unless you've done been doing some of these updates along the way, and you've got your sight set on the future. And you're making decisions about that future business in the direction you're trending. And when we get kind of stuck in the past, it's really difficult. You know, we're trying to like make these, it's almost like a a car mechanic on an old, like rusted out car, trying to go in and fix holes and tune things up and tighten things and make the car run okay. But it's not a good, it's not a good system, right? So we have to actually be, instead of trying to fix these little areas, we have to actually be looking at the system as a whole um, and making sure that it still really works for us today. My favorite quote comes from Marshall Goldsmith. What got you here won't get you there. And so even if you're a growing business, you know, what gets you to a half million isn't what gets you to one million is not what gets you to five million. So just as you grow in and of itself, you need to constantly change the way you do things. And part of that is also letting go, right? Mm -hmm. The more you grow, the more you have to let go. And the more you have to let go the more you need systems in your business to for your people to run so that they know what to do. Because over time, you're going to have people swapping out too. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have systems and processes into your business for them to follow, you're literally starting over with every new employee, which means you're spending a fortune. Yes, and a lot of time, which is valuable in terms of money, but it's even more valuable in terms of your quality of life and what you ultimately get out of this entire experience. So I've heard you say the harder you work, the slower your business grows. Why is that? Yes. (laughs) The nutshell answer to this is because when we are working hard, We are not thinking strategically. We're not thinking big picture. We're not looking for ultimate solutions. We're just looking for band-aids. And if even that, right? So my my car analogy works here too. Um, We don't, we miss so many opportunities for profit. We miss so many opportunities for actually optimizing the business we already have um, and have this kind of like throw the baby out with the bathwater mentality on some of our best products and services, because we're simply seeing them as broken instead of seeing how we can continue to improve and grow upon them. So we, in an essence, we just make bad decisions. The harder we're working, the less good our decisions are about the business and about how we're spending our time. Because we're not spending enough time thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's a big part of what I believe is everyone needs thinking time in their business and the ability to to do those big picture kind of thoughts and figuring stuff out. Because if you don't, you're going to struggle. Absolutely. So when you help people 
do these systems? Are you, are you using software? Are you just creating documents? Like, how do you go about doing this? What's the process? Yeah, so it's it's always custom to people how they like to work. So one of the things I do with people is I help them kind of design their work style. And so for me, that's about looking at daily workflows. How do you operate through the course of your day? How do you operate through the course of your week? And actually using their real lifestyle, the one that they want to be living. So it's the lifestyle where I take my kids to school and I pick them up. So I work between these hours. And then um, it's the lifestyle where I want to have Fridays off. Um, It's the lifestyle where I feel like I'm at my best energy certain times of the day. So I'm going to focus these tasks and activities in in that part of the day. And so instead of trying to get people to conform to a system that works, my job is really to help people uncover their, their natural inclinations, their natural energy cycles, their natural creativity, and apply a system or build a framework more so that that helps them work within those frames. And then meanwhile, we're also looking at some of the destructive, um, sabotaging habits like poor time management, not setting boundaries um, with clients or with family members, um, the the areas where we start on projects and then don't follow through and actually finish them to the end. So we get sidetracked or distracted. Those are the kinds of things that we're trying to kind of remove and and repattern simultaneously as we're building a new workflow for them. And so from that, then we start to actually look at what are the systems in terms of tools, softwares, processes, documents, team members, any of the pieces that are going to come in to support that. But that's really the phase two after we're very clear on how do you want to operate your business and what does the business need in order to operate efficiently. So Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, what are some of those things that business owners do to essentially screw up their lives and their business? (laughs) Well, the big one is overworking to the point of exhaustion. So this is where I I think that we sometimes get a little bit confused between um, ambition and achievement and um, and the natural Uh, hustle. That's kind of a buzzword and a lot of (laughs) conflicting viewpoints, but the natural hustle need that businesses have when we're getting something new off the ground, right? So we are, we know that in order to achieve certain results, we got to put in some like legwork, right? We, we got to, we got to hustle. However, it's hustle itself is a very high energy and like high consumption activity. We cannot do it forever. So This is a big thing where people simply cross that threshold and don't know that they've crossed it or they don't know how to stop it once they've crossed it. So they have this idea that you have to continue working harder, that you have to continue at the same pace in order to maintain or in order to grow. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you set up a business that requires all of your bandwidth and more in order to operate, then you're just going to like you're you're going to burn out like a shooting star. It's going to look really great for a minute and then poof, it's totally gone. So that's the biggest one that I see with entrepreneurs over and over. Um, Another few that I'll just kind of throw out there are procrastination as a habit and perfectionism as a habit. Perfectionism is something that people really think is a character trait and it's not. It's simply a habit. It's something that you need to break yourself of (laughs) in order to build the business in the way that you want it. And I see those all the time. So very much spot on. Anything else you wanted to share with the audience today? Um, Let's see here. I, you know, just in talking, kind of circling it back to Profit First as a, you said a habit. I really like to think of it too as this, it's really helped us shift our mindset around the business itself and what a healthy business is supposed to look like. Again, I'm using a lot of air quotes that nobody can see. (laughs) Um, But we, I think we all kind of go into business having this idea of what it's supposed to look like. 
And again, we're getting that information from what we see in the outside world. We have no idea how the internal operations of any business or any person are actually going, whether it's working or not working. Um, but so I, I really appreciate and enjoy Profit First as a, again, kind of recalibration of what this is as running a business in accordance to a system that's going to be sustainable and healthy across the board. And I love that even the title of it is about recognizing the value that you are putting into the business too. So profit doesn't mean like money in my pocket, but profit does give you the sense of extra. It gives you the sense of the business is paying you back. The business is paying itself forward and really making sure that we see ourselves as the driver of a business rather than being all of the like internal operating, you know, machines pulling all of the levers and doing all of the things. I think that's the place we have to learn to get out of in order for this to grow. And so I like to think of it in that way too, is that it really just kind of reframes the way that we look about, look at how we're supposed to be running our business. And this is why we get into arguments with accountants because accountants think this is an accounting system. We're like, no, this is not an accounting system. This is a mindset system. It's a cash yeah. flow management system. It has nothing to do with your accounting and it's not really that hard to do accounting wise. So don't worry about it. But it is very much what you said. It is is about shifting the way you think about money within your business and looking at things differently. If people would like to connect with you, find out more about what you do and how you serve, what's the best way for them to do that? Yes, I would love that. So my website is lindsaybrownson.com. So it's L-I-N-S-I. You'll see that probably in the show notes. Um, which is where you can connect with me and you can also uh, find my podcast there as well. It's called Be Brilliant in Your Business and it's uh, pep talks and practical tools to help you get energized, organized, and inspired. And I encourage you all to check it out. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rocky. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. My name is Kita, and I am another one of the Profit First professionals on the Profit Comes First team. Today, Lindsay and Rocky discussed how to run your business successfully without getting burnt out. Systems like Profit First help you to manage your cash flow so that you're spending the right amount of time, which is not too little and not too much, on that aspect of your business. And this is just one example of a system, method, or tool that helps you work smarter and not harder. As Lindsay talked about today, the harder you work, the slower your business grows. Excessive hustle culture and overworking ourselves to the point of exhaustion is not the best way to grow our businesses because we just don't have the focus, energy, or time to think through what our business needs. Have you spent time recently thinking about the big picture of your business? Are there strategies that you can implement that will grow your business without requiring you to work excessively long hours? This week, your challenge is to find ways to adjust your business so that you can prioritize both business and personal success. If you want a done-for-you service, you can hire us as your chief profitability officers. You have your own area of expertise, and maybe you want to spend more of your time doing what you love. We only work with a handful of clients, so they all get our full attention. We work with business owners who have or are growing to half a million to five million in revenue. You can use the scheduling link in the show notes to get on our calendar for a good fit conversation to see if we're the right people to support you and how we can help you. Hey, it's Rocky. Don't forget to check out my other podcast, Richer Soul, where we talk about life beyond money and how to live that ultimate life and become a better leader in your company. As we close out, let's repeat the mantra. Revenue is vanity. Profit is sanity and cash is king. Have an abundant and profitable week.